Hello everyone, it's Shane Conto, your Wasteland Review, and welcome to Wasteland Talks, my weekly talk show where I talk about whatever the hell I want. And this week, I have a very special guest on, my brother Ethan. Hello, how you doing? And we were going to have our friend Dave on, but we're going to pour one out for Dave. He had to pull out last minute. But in honor of Dave, here's some love for Cowboy Bebop the movie, because we're going to be counting down our top five anime films. So one thing anybody else would want to talk anime with than my brother and also Dave. So before we get started, Ethan, would you like to shamelessly plug anything for my audience? Uh, I might as well, even though I haven't put too much content in a while. Dante Ro cosplay on Instagram. Follow it. There you go. Like my, like my stuff that you actually like. Don't like it just for the, the heck of it. There you go. And we're going to be talking about some plenty of anime here. So how this is going to work, Ethan's going to give his number five. I'll give my number five and so on until we get to our number ones. If a movie pops up, we'll talk about it thoroughly. And then if it pops up later on one of our of the other person's list, we'll kind of just like move forward since where he kind of talked about it. But Ethan, what's your number five? My number five is Weathering With You by Makoto Shinke. Very nice. Why is Weathering With You on there? It's hard. It's like uh, it's how my taste is with <laughs> anime, I guess. Um, I like drama mm -hmm. anime. Um, and what I like about, um, Mikoto Shinke is he has like themes to his films. Um, it's like time. Um, what's, what are the other themes? I forget. Like he has a specific theme in like every film that he's put together and I really like just the wholesomeness of weathering with you. Um, I was really anticipating it um, based off of the other movies that I, the other films that I've seen with from Makoto Shinke. Um, so I waited a while once I heard about it. I was like, this needs to come out. This needs to come out. It wasn't on VOD. It wasn't available to buy. Nothing like that for a really long time. So I finally got to watch it. And it's the wholesomeness of the movie. Um, the score slash soundtrack is incredible. Rad Wimps. Like, they do a really good job at um, narrating, essentially, a film. Um, because everything that they play just flows with the the whole movie and i know it it's definitely intentional how they do it it's just the mm. theme of their whole whether it's like a song or just like a score it's it just flows throughout the whole movie and that's one of the things that helps you immerse yourself in that movie is um the characters the relatability of it um and then the music driving it and of course, Makoto Shinkei is just, he's incredible. Yeah, I, um, if we were doing honorable mentions, which we kind of just skipped over, your name was pretty close to getting on my top five list. And having Man. seen, seeing, uh, be on your top five, Shane. <laughs> well, I'm going to get to my top five. So we'll see. Uh, after seeing Susume 2, which is, um, his most recent film it's it's very interesting how he tackles you have like this teenage story this coming of age story there's always some kind of teenage romance type story about it but then there's always this other element with your name you know it's the mechanism of how they have this chance connection with each other weathering with you is you know the manipulation of the weather Susume is like this idea of like guy gets turned into a chair um and Here's closing all these portals and stuff like that 
And there's always some kind of fantastical element that gets laid on top of it. Also, all of his films are absolutely breathtakingly gorgeous. There's yes. just something really special about how they look visually. Yeah, you definitely need to get them on Blu-ray or 4K. Or right now, you can stream them. Or at least you can stream Weathering with you on HBO Max, a.k.a. what will soon just be called Max. So, but I'm taking mine in a bit of a different direction. Um, going with Studio Ghibli and Hayao Miyazaki for my number five, which is Ponyo. I've actually seen this in theaters twice for some reason. Like, this was the the one movie that I've seen multiple times with, like, Ghibli Fest that they do every year, which is the coolest. If you haven't actually taken advantage of that and go in to see some of uh, Miyazaki's films in a theater, do it. And yeah, I still haven't done Ponyo is definitely one of the more like for everyone in the family type of films that he's done because it's a lot more like kid friendly too. Yeah. But Ponyo's so cute. It's about a boy and his goldfish who turns out to be a girl named Ponyo. And they go on this crazy adventure through like a water logged world after a giant like tidal wave comes in. Um Obviously, it depends on if you listen to the subbed or dubbed versions, which a lot of uh, Miyazaki films, I've watched the dubbed versions with like the American performers and stuff or like um, more Western performers, because like this has Liam Neeson's in it. Yeah, yeah, he get (laughs) they. The voice actors that they get for the American version of his movies legit like crazy Holy crap yeah. they're they're star-studded cast in like every single one of them but like this yeah. film's so whimsical and fun and it's so weird it's definitely one of his weirdest ones but like it's so fun and endearing in the way that it it's the kind of whimsical adventure you want out of a fantasy film and it doesn't have like so <laughs> I can promise you the other other uh, films on my list are much darker than this one. But like this one's a lot more lighthearted and fun. And you know what? Sometimes you just need that. And I think Ponyo is his perfect one. Because like the heaviest element of the film is that like the main boy and his mom miss the father and the husband and the family because he's out at sea and stuff like that, which like in the grand scheme of Miyazaki films, you could be having Grave of the Fireflies um, level dark and emotional. So this is pretty, pretty light and weird and fun. So that's why I love Ponyo. And also that Ponyo song is stuck in your head for days. You, you, you can easily have, Miyazaki and the the Ghibli um, studio just make a top five out of that. It could easily be done, but Not gonna lie, a decent <laughs> chunk of mine are. <laughs> <laughs> so they're they're freaking masterpieces, and they've been masterpieces since the eighties. Yep, he's been killing it. Like he doesn't make a bad movie. Neither, neither does the um the studio itself until like very 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 recently i was not a big fan of um was it earwig or uh, i don't think i've seen loose it was it was a weird movie and also was hideous the 3d animation like made me very uncomfortable but Ethan, what's your number four Akira. Nice. Akira. Akira. To pronounce it correctly. I feel like it's difficult to have a list without Akira. It's like one of the most famous, honestly, um, anime films of all time. And that's not really why you should just... It should be on a list. But... It's just, it's, it is incredible. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, 
Um, even the the animation for when this came out, I think late eighties. Um, <laughs> it was still incredible what it looked like because I, you know, if you watch enough anime, you've seen some eighties anime, and it looks like crap. This is um, but you can you can look at it. It's like you have this movie with how beautiful it is for the time. And then you go and look at, um, as much as I love it, Dragon Ball. The it, animation is not that good. <laughs> there's, a, there's a whole level yeah. difference. And Katsuhiro Otomo just made a gorgeous film. Yeah, it's there's so much going on in that movie, so much action. It was really gory too. For yeah, this for, is a um, very mature anime. <laughs> this is not for kids. Nope, not at all. I'm pretty sure it's rated R. Yeah, as it should be. Yes, as it should be. But it's yeah, like a lot of them. I'm just reading so just to like refresh because it has been a while since I watched it. But yeah, the thing is, it's like I, um, I never watched the, uh, I mean, read the the manga. I mean, mm -hmm. that was the first thing that I, I feel like that happens a lot, um, because just how long like the manga had been around for like almost anything, that most of the time. Um, when you get into like anime and uh, Japanese culture, it typically you get your feet wet in the anime first, <laughs> and then you kind of do it backwards and start reading the manga. But it's a lot. It, well, especially if you're talking about films, it's a lot easier to commit to a two-hour and four-minute movie than like yeah. a whole entire series of manga. No, it is 100% worth reading a manga from book book one all the way through did that with soul eater incredible nice i just because spoiler alert this is gonna be on my list um but like this film does so many things so well and it like you said it's so influential like jordan peele wanted to make this film but decided against it because he wants to stick with his original stuff. He put very, very obvious nods to Akira in Nope, which was really cool. And he 100% nerded out about it in an interview. He's like, I did that! <laughs> um, and you could see so many influences on from like the film Chronicle, from Josh Trank, with like the all of a sudden you have this psychic ability and like going completely insane and evil with it. That's like ripped right out of the climax of this movie, which my God, this has one of the most grotesque third acts in an anime. Just, just the grotesque manipulation of human bodies to like a disgusting degree. And then you could say that action in this is top tier for an anime. The action in this is top tier for any movie. Like, that's how good the action is in this with, like, these uh, motorcycle uh, chases and everything. And this... I am trying to think what the appropriate term I, is. For some reason, I think acid punk, but I don't know if that's really it. Like, this has, like, this very specific kind of... Uh, or my acid noir kind of feel to the whole world in it. And also one of the hardest things to animate is lighting. And my God, how they animate the lighting in this film is breathtaking. But like there's, this is hard. It is intense. It is something special. Um, My number four is another Miyazaki film is Spirited Away. And this is probably, well, arguably his best film and most praised film. This fun fact was the winner of the second ever Best Animated Feature Oscar at the Academy Awards back in 2002 um, after Shrek won the first one. 
Uh, but this film is so like there's so much iconic creatures in this like from the dragon to you know like little dust mite people um yeah, they're, they're the best <laughs> they're the best to uh was it faceless my god <laughs> what a gluttonous spirit he is um and just like the imagery is so beautiful it has that very classic like fairy tale type story you know this young girl and her parents wander into this place and you know parents don't listen and then they turn into some piggies um and she has to work for a witch and everything and to try to get her parents turned back into humans and all of this kind of stuff it really captures that like wonder of like fairy tales and everything except you take it to the next level because this is a Miyazaki film and it's absolutely gorgeous and mm -hmm. it's crazy some of the places that this goes and there's so many magical moments of like flying on the dragon and everything and obviously like the most iconic moments is like her and faceless sitting on that train that trolley and yeah. just Everything about it is so wonderful. For Ghibli Fest this year, they were showing a stage performance of Spirited Away in theaters, which I kind of wish that I got to go see that. Um, I see too many, I watch too many damn new movies to find time a lot of the time to go watch like old ones in a the theater. But mm -hmm. one, of, one of these days, one of these years, I'll actually make it through all of Ghibli Fest. I think I made it six months one year. And then at that point, my the transmission in my car went. And I'm like, well, I need to save some money. So I didn't go through the last six months of it. But yeah. this isn't foreshadowing. <laughs> huh? It's no. not foreshadowing. No, no foreshadowing. Mm -hmm. um, do you have anything to add about Spirited Away? Of course. That's my number two. Well, there you go. <laughs> um, yeah. I, like I said before, all I, I feel like essentially all of that studio's work is just gold. And um, I love the aesthetic of that movie. Mm -hmm. It's a movie where you put it on shut the lights off and just like immerse yourself in in the world because you can they they're so detailed in it that you can feel like you can immerse yourself in it maybe order or cook some ramen before that like that's the kind of like that's the kind of anime film that you just straight up immerse yourself like mm -hmm. get comfy with some hot ramen and watch it but yeah, I have a lot of um, reasons why I like things is it's like aesthetically driven person. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the most aesthetically pleasing films out there. Um, like, because there's, there's just so much going on it. Essentially, like every step of the way throughout that movie. It's not there. There's nothing in there that's boring. You're not going to be bored for the two plus hours that you're going to be watching it. Yeah, and that's a that's a cool thing. Of like, you certainly get your money's worth when it comes to a lot of anime films, because you know, yeah. I think standard like American animations around ninety minutes, unless you're Pixar, and then you're like an hour forty five, hour fifty. Nope, these ones two hours, giving you a whole two hours worth. Yeah, it makes me sad when anything's under two hours. <laughs> to be honest with you, I'm like, well, I want more. <laughs> I want more. <laughs> um, just to throw out there, all of their films, Studio Ghibli, are on HBO Max, soon to be Max. So, so much great anime to yes. enjoy on there. That That's one of the, the great things about the app is there's literally just a category for Ghibli. <laughs> So. Yes. But, Ethan, what is your number three? 
my number three is Eden of the East. If you have not heard of it, if you have not watched it, 100%, you need to. <laughs> um, it is. It started as a. It's a show too. It's a. It was a series, and then it had some movies. But um, the first one, the first movie in it is incredible. The soundtrack is beautiful. Um, the animation, like we we're talking about how Kota Shinke, um, Miyazaki, they have beautiful stuff. Like, I'll be perfectly honest with you. I think this animation's even better than like, Weathering With You and Your Name. Um, it's just a really cool concept also. Um, this kid basically wakes up with amnesia, <laughs> doesn't know who he is. He has a cell phone that has all his money on it. <laughs> and you got to spend it a certain way. Um, and it's like, it's a really good, it's like, it's a drama and thriller at the same time slash like, um, like mystery all wrapped in one. It's, it has really good drama, has really good action. And, um, I mean, I feel like the story is pretty um, in depth that there's always something going on. And then you're thinking about trying to figure out, like, what is actually going on in this? And trying to figure out the ending, but it's you're, you're not going to, <laughs> more than likely. I have added this to my watch list, so... Yes, right away. Because it's Eden of the East, the movie won the King of Eden. Yeah. Watch the show. Uh, watch, like, the 12 episode series first. But Okay. Well, investment. So, <laughs> I I don't want to... What happened when I went to go see the new Demon Slayer um, movie, movie to happen when it turned out to be just, like, four episodes of the new season of the show. I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> I'm so confused. That's weird. Yeah, I felt I felt a little uh, like, I'm like, they should have made that clearer before I spent my money to go see that. Because I went to go see that at Regal because they had it. And I actually had to pay for my ticket um, instead of my AMC A-list. But it sounds like a really interesting idea. I none none of them made my top five, but I like Perfect Blue is also one of my um, honorable mentions, and like that's a really cool like mystery thriller type anime about a actress, a singer turned actress who's being like stalked by a crazed fan. So this seems pretty cool. I'll have to check it out. My number three is Ghost in the Shell. Yes. This I don't know how it's I don't have it on mine, but like there so was just so many anime. running in my head. So many anime. Yeah. So like this is a hundred percent like in the vein of like Blade Runner and then highly influenced the Matrix and all kinds of stuff mm -hmm. that came after this. This is such a dark and gritty anime. There's so much texture to everything. And having um, this cyborg police woman as like your main character, she's so badass. And yeah. the action <laughs> sequences in this are insane. Like the opening one where she like invades that like meeting. Um, through like the windows and stuff like that and then the really awesome one where she's like camouflaging um, yeah. in the water like I completely understand why they wanted to remake this in live action because how cool this is um, did not love it anywhere as much as I love this anime but there's such a cool cool idea this 
whole idea of artificial intelligence and computers and this puppet master antagonist there's just so much going on here and it works so well and it's so engaging and uh Mamoru Oshii who directed this because like this is like a tight 83 minutes so like this is not a long anime but it is dense there's so much to it this is not an easy watch so like this isn't like throw it in on the background kind of thing put your phone away is what you have to do or you're not gonna know what the hell is going on exactly like this this is a lot of dense material a lot of mystery and action and crime thriller and the music is so unexpected but so like haunting i have and, soundtracks <laughs> yeah it's it's pretty legit um it's no surprise like this i got to do an episode of the wasteland rewind podcast for scribe on this and the following month, month was Akira with my friend Tyler um, <laughs> from Sif, uh, from Scribe Magazine. And it was a cool time talking about that. He's, he's a big anime fan. So he was super into it. Um, but like, this is definitely one, like, this, if you're getting into anime, this is not what you start off with. <laughs> um, start with Ponyo. That's a lot. It's weird, but it's it's a lot easier to ease into this is like once you get to expert status <laughs> you want to like dig into something really complex and intriguing go for ghost of the show it's funny i did the complete opposite when i got into legitimately watching anime i was like all in all the crazy stuff like serial experiments lane and like all that and yet they, they have uh, your favorite things in it sentient beings Robophobe. <laughs> Robophobe engaged. Um, <laughs> but yeah, this is just such a cool, cool anime. Um, was there anything else you wanted to add about Ghost in the Shell? Just strap in. Strap your seatbelt on and go for that ride and completely immerse yourself in it. Don't and don't have distractions it, while you're watching it. It's it good is to... crazy immersive. Like it just like you get just drenched <laughs> in all this like technoir type of environment. But what is your number two? My number two is hold on. Yeah, it is spirited away because yeah, yeah. So we did talk about spirited away, which is funny. Because we also talked about my number two, which is Akira. So, obviously, both of them are really cool, and you should check them out. Correct. What's your number one, then? Your name. I kind of figured that was going to pop up when you made a comment about that, so go ahead. Yeah, it's... If, yeah, it's... It started um, my love for the like drama um, anime. Um, like I said, it's this story is a lot more pull at your heartstrings. I think mm. even I'm weathering with you um, as I, I mean, weathering with you is still like it pulled at your heartstrings. But like this is like you feel it while you're watching this movie this is a movie <laughs> if you have <clears throat> any sads in you <laughs> you're gonna cry 100 like it is incredible like and like i said um the kodo shinke his movies are just and there's more that he did that i love but i still like i didn't even have it there's just so many it's hard to even it was hard to even do this, but like, um, <coughs> Rad Wimps did the same. They did the score and soundtrack for it. And this, this one, this movie with the soundtrack score is probably the best 
um, soundtrack of anything that I've I've watched. It's incredible. Like you can, I can almost see the movie when I'm listening to the soundtrack to this. That's special. If you yeah, could do that and you could just recreate the whole entire film, left an impact. They did. They in Japan they had a full orchestra with them, with the band, and the movie playing in the background, like on the big screen, and they were doing a live score for it. Like they had the audio of the movie and the whole score of it was them playing live. And you need a lot if YouTube want YouTube it and you're like, holy shit, this is amazing. But it's like that kind of movie. Like that's how intertwined the movie and the soundtrack are. Like you can legitimately do something like that and you just paint a story with the music alone and you can literally legitimately visualize a movie as you're listening to the music. Um, but yeah, the, this is more complex, um, a lot more. Um, this is definitely another one that you have to pay a hundred percent attention to because I've seen it like a handful of times. Mm -hmm. And I still catch stuff as I'm watching it that I hadn't before. So, and it's not just like a, you know, a lovey-dovey, like, young romance type deal. Like, this is like, this is legit. And it's complex. It's not just a, oh, this guy likes this girl. Somehow they're, you know, connected. Like, there's a whole lot that goes into it. Well, and that's something you expect with Shinkai is like, this isn't simple. Like, there's some fantastical layers added to all of his stories. And like, mm -hmm. I feel like this is like his peak film. Because like, I really enjoyed Weathering for You a lot. And mm -hmm. I enjoyed Susume. But like, this is best one. And this blew up. Like, I remember going to see this in theaters with Kevin uh when he came up to see me and we went to amc hamilton and saw this in like one of the big theaters which was really cool and then this made 382 million dollars worldwide That's like insane. this is a incredibly successful anime and only five of that was made in the u.s uh, so like um this is definitely like i think shinkai is like the gold standard for like modern anime films he's really like taken the reins and have made some of the best anime films of like the past yeah. 10 years um my number one is getting old school again because i'm going back to miyazaki and my number one is princess mononoke that's not for kids <laughs> no it is not because i remember <laughs> when pretty sure we were at the wallace's and this was on, and that um, uh, infected boar at the beginning of the movie scared the crap out of me. Like, this is an epic film. It's a war film. There's mm -hmm. violence and action. There's horrifying moments, like this whole, like, infection that's destroying nature. And, like, you have the forest spirit and everything just the creatures are incredible the scale of it this is the biggest scale i feel like of one of the biggest scales of uh any of miyazaki's films like this is a sprawling epic like i would expect something like this from like akira kurosawa if it was live action it's that cool with all of the just like the clans and stuff like that and this mining town versus nature. And obviously you have those underlying themes and ideas that are layered in there. And it's just breathtaking and intense. And this is actually our movie of the month for my movie club. 
So I can't wait to talk about this with my friends for that at the end of this month. Um gonna be rewatching it for my uh animation uh movie marathon for the month of May. Um but it's it's such a big sprawling epic film that has tons of action, it's thrilling, it's exciting, and it's pretty badass. So this is like there's very few live action fantasy films that deliver such a fa satisfying experience because there's so much that you can do with animation and they just nail it with this one. Quite a few people lose some limbs. Yeah, th this also is not for kids. So just because it's animated doesn't mean it's for kids. Correct. So learn that lesson quick, people. <laughs> but like just throwing out like some of the other because like I know your name was a close one up there my neighbor Totoro love my neighbor Totoro Grave of the Fireflies <laughs> gonna make you cry The Red Turtle is a beautiful film and especially some um like really recent ones uh, Belle was a really cool one that came out last year I think it was and then uh, Pupil of Chimney Town. That was a really cool one that I got to check out last year, too. So there's a lot of awesome anime out there for all of you to enjoy. Little Nemo. Uh, yeah, right? Is it yeah. Nemo or Makoto Shinkai. Ah, there you go. It is, it is really good. <laughs> Just get all, get all your anime on Blu-ray. Make it look nice and beautiful. <laughs> yep. So you can enjoy every second of it. Yeah, but. it's he doesn't his stuff's so good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's so much anime to dive into, and we just talked about movies. There's plenty of series out there. And if you want something to do until you die, you could go watch One Piece from start to finish. <laughs> uh. <laughs> so much. I actually really enjoyed the One Piece Red movie that came out too last year. That I enjoyed that quite a bit. Like but six hundred something episodes. So many. But Ethan, thank you so much for coming on and talking some anime. Thank you for having me. And thank all of you out there for always tuning in and supporting your Wasteland reviewer.